The following is for informational purposes only and is not intended as legal advice. Under the Food Safety Modernization Act, which rule covers my produce or food products? What does it mean to be covered by a rule? Covered means that A. Your produce or product falls under one of the regulations issued under the Food Safety Modernization Act. And B. You need to make sure you are in compliance with each of the specific requirements in that regulation. In some cases, those covered under the regulations are eligible for exemptions to the rules, which we'll go over later. We'll use a series of flowcharts to help you figure out which rule you are covered under. We'll present you with some statements, and then, depending on which statement you agree with, you will move to the next set of statements until you determine your FISMA status. We'll start with a series of questions related to what type of food business you operate, according to the FDA, a farm, packing operation, or processing facility. First, do you grow, harvest, and pack produce on your farm? According to the FDA, a farm is an operation devoted to growing, harvesting, and packing produce in one general location and under one general management. Second, do you conduct off-farm packing activities? The FDA defines a packing operation as a location where harvested produce is placed into containers and shipped for further distribution. And finally, the last question, do you operate a food processing facility? That's a place where food or ingredients are transformed into new food products by physical or chemical means. Think about each of these questions and decide which category you fall under. If you said you grow, harvest, and pack produce, you fall into this box. Your business is a farm. The first decision to make is related to whether or not you grow any produce that is likely to be eaten raw. Let's stop for a minute and discuss what exactly the FDA means when they say produce likely to be eaten raw. The FDA established a list of familiar items that falls into this category. These include most fruits and vegetables, greens, nuts, and herbs. In some situations, some of these items might also be sold as canned or frozen products, or could be cooked by the consumer. Things like tomatoes or onions. But if there is a strong possibility that some people would eat them raw, it's on this list. Here is the full list. You can pause the video now if you like to review it in detail. Note that this list is not exhaustive, meaning that there are potentially others that FDA has not thought of yet. But FDA has another list. These are produce crops that they have decided are rarely consumed raw. These are things that are almost always cooked or processed in some way, such as dry beans root crops, and baking fruit. Here's the full list. It is an exhaustive list, meaning unlike the previous list, it is complete according to the FDA. Go ahead and pause the video now if you'd like to review it. Okay, let's get back to the flowchart. If you selected, I only grow produce that is rarely eaten raw, then none of the produce you grow is covered under the produce safety rule. It's that simple. This rule only covers produce that is likely to be eaten raw. But if you said yes, at least some produce I grow is on the FDA's list of produce likely to be eaten raw, then those produce crops could be covered under the produce safety rule. But to find out, you need to go to the next set of statements and choose which one is true about your farm. My average annual produce sales are less than $25,000. Or, my average annual produce sales are at least $25,000. The amount of your annual produce sales is the average value of your produce sales taken over the last three years. And the dollar limit will be raised each year based on the rate of inflation. That means the limit will go up a bit each year. If your average annual produce sales are less than $25,000, then none of your produce is covered under the produce safety rule. 
Congress wrote this $25,000 limit on produce sales into the Food Safety Modernization Act to protect very small farming operations from burdensome regulations. So, what if your average annual produce sales are at least $25,000? If that's the case, then at least some of the produce you grow is covered under the produce safety rule. Later, we'll check to see if any exemptions to the rule apply to your operation. Before we move on to the next category of business activities, let's retrace our route back to the top of the flowchart. If your business is a farm, you have one more possibility to follow, and that is, I also process food on my farm. That means that some type of value-added commercial food processing activities occur on your farm. Again, processing food for personal use only doesn't count. So, what is the specific definition of food processing? According to the FDA, it is when you transform food or ingredients into new food products by physical or chemical means. For instance, do you slice or peel your apples or carrots before you sell them? Do you can or freeze any of your products for sale? Cooking, baking, drying, and fermenting are also examples of food processing methods. If you do any of these activities on your farm, any processed food products that you then sell are covered under the Preventive Controls for Human Food Rule. So that means you could be covered under both rules. Now, let's go back up and over to the next box on the flowchart where it says, I process food. That is, your business is a food processing facility. If you process foods, no matter if it's on a farm or as a standalone business, then you are covered under the Preventive Controls for Human Food Rule. You may qualify for some exemptions, but we'll return to this to see later if you are eligible for any of these. Also note that a few years ago, all food processing facilities were required under federal law to register with the FDA. If you did this, you are covered under the Preventive Controls for Human Foods Rule. If you have not registered your food processing facility yet, you should call the FDA or visit their website to do so immediately. Okay. We're almost done with our coverage decisions, but there is one more set of decisions to go over. Let's go back up and over to the box that says, I pack fresh produce at a location that is not on a farm. Before you proceed here, it's important to understand that if you pack produce on your farm, you fall into this first category and you're only covered by the produce safety rule. But if you conduct packing activities at a location that is not on your farm, you need to move down to the next set of choices. Again, you have two statements to choose from. The first statement is more than 50% of the produce I pack is grown on a farm or farms under a different ownership than my packing house. If this is true, then your packing activities are covered under the preventive controls for human food rule. But what if only 50% or less of the produce you pack off farm is grown on a farm or farms under a different ownership than your packing house? In other words, more than half of the produce you pack was grown on your farm. If this is true, then FDA says your packing activities are covered under the produce safety rule. Later, we'll help you figure out whether you are eligible for any exemptions for each of these rules. You see by now that this is pretty complex. If you're unsure of anything, go back to the beginning and go through it again. But here is something to keep in mind. Even if you determine your produce or products are not covered, if you sell them to commercial buyers, the buyer may require that you provide evidence of good food safety practices. And that could mean meeting the food safety standards in the produce safety rule or the preventive controls for human food rule. So be sure to ask your buyers. In this video, we looked at three types of business activities and determined if any of your produce crops or food products are covered. If you still are not sure of where you stand, Go to the Penn State FISMA website to find an expert who can help you.